Welcome to this evening Bible study. I sure am enjoying being with you during this time each evening bringing Bible studies. I have probably enjoyed these more than any who are out there listening and we've heard really good responses. So I appreciate those of you who faithfully every night looking forward to this. Your hunger for the word has really been an encouragement to me. I think that uh, one thing that we've lacked in the in the church in recent years has been a real hunger for the word and I I just want to commend you for your faithfulness to listen to these Bible studies and to follow along with me and hopefully as I'm learning from them hopefully you are too and I also want to thank you for your kind words just letting me know how much you're getting out of these messages during this time of isolation you think of isolation, you think, well, I think of prisons. Prisons have uh, isolation wards where you, you put the, the, the criminal that's been misbehaving. This, these are tough times for us to be in isolation. But it's been good for me to be able to come here to my office every day, be able to work with our staff and put together these services for you. Lord sure blessed us this past Easter. Linda Mayhew said this was the best Easter she's ever had. And, and that does my heart good to know that the drive-in service was a blessing and the Lord really showed up and we, we praise his name for it. Well, we're praying for one another, praying for you and your loved ones. Continue to pray for Nancy's aunt up in New York. She, last I heard, is still very critical, but had a little better a night um, as of yesterday, so continue to lift her up in your prayers if you would, and then pray for her sister who uh, lost her husband recently, so we're praying for Nancy Minnie's sister, also her aunt. Uh, pray for one another. Some of you maybe have been in the hospital. Some of you have maybe been sick, and if we're not aware of that, we certainly want to know that so that we can pray for you. So call us here at the church, 239 one seven seven six two three nine one seven seven six. Let us know if you have any prayer requests or if you know of someone that we can mention on this nightly Bible study who needs our prayers. And one thing I want to encourage you is I was on a conference call today with some other pastors, about forty some other pastors, and we were all on a Zoom call. And one of the things that we talked about helping people through this time with anxieties and fears and and isolation time is to pick up the phone and call and just read God's word to them and pray with them. So I've done that today and I want to encourage you to do that. Think of someone, let the Lord lay someone on your heart and give them a call and maybe just read a passage of scripture to them. If you don't have a passage of scripture, let me give you one. Isaiah chapter 40, verses 28 through 31, and just read that passage of scripture to them. That concludes with that great verse, they that wait upon the Lord shall renew their strength. They shall mount up with wings as eagles. They shall run and not be weary, and they shall walk and not faint. And what an encouragement that'll be to someone to hear from you, and you just pray with them and read God's word for them. Father, I thank you for this church family that we have, that we long together to be together again. We look forward to a great reunion service soon. We pray for our nation. We pray for our president. We pray for the leaders of this country, that you would give them wisdom, that you would give them humility, that you would give them more love for others. Bless this time together in your word. In Jesus' name, amen. So I am bringing you a series on 17 amazing appearances of the risen Lord Jesus Christ. 17 amazing appearances after his resurrection. Acts chapter 1 and verse number 3 says that Jesus appeared to many people on many different occasions. To him or to whom he also presented himself alive after his suffering by many infallible proofs, being seen by them 40 days and speaking of the things pertaining to the kingdom of God. So Jesus, after his suffering, 
And we gave you 12 lessons on that. The nailing of his hands and feet to the cross, the beating, the scourging, the crown of thorns, the mockings and the spitting, the insults, eventually his death on the cross. Then Sunday, we looked at the resurrection of our Lord Jesus Christ from John 20. Now I'm taking you through 17 amazing appearances. The first one we looked at, Jesus appeared to Mary Magdalene. Now today we're going to look at his appearance as he appears to the other women there in Matthew chapter 28. But this verse says, after his suffering, Jesus, by many infallible proofs, was seen by them for 40 days and spoke to them the things pertaining to the kingdom of God. So our religion is a religion that can be, that has many infallible proofs for the person and the work of Jesus Christ, for his death, his burial, and his resurrection. And I trust that you will search the scriptures and that you will find these things to be so yourself. So the Lord appeared no less than 17 times after his resurrection. The first appearance of Christ was to Mary Magdalene, out of whom he had cast seven demons, you remember. And because she was forgiven much, the same loved much, and therefore our Lord appeared to her first. Now it's interesting that on the second occasion, our Lord appears to the other women who out of love came to the tomb bearing spices to anoint the body of the Lord Jesus Christ, whom they loved with all their heart. Then the third appearance was to Peter in the afternoon after the resurrection. The fourth appearance was to the two on the road to Emmaus. You remember Luke chapter 24. The fifth appearance of the resurrected Christ was to the ten disciples. Thomas was not present. The sixth appearance was to the eleven disciples with Thomas present which was a week after the resurrection. The seventh appearance was to the seven disciples by the Sea of Galilee. The eighth appearance was to the 500 that Paul mentioned in 1 Corinthians 15. The ninth appearance was to James, the Lord's brother. The tenth appearance was to the 11 disciples on the mountain there in Galilee, where Jesus gave the Great Commission, where he said to them, go into all the world and preach the gospel. You had that great commission, by the way, not only in Matthew, but you have it in Mark and Luke and also in the Gospel of John. As the Father sent me, Jesus said, John twenty twenty one, so send I you. The 11th appearance was Jesus there uh, before he ascended on the Mount of Olives. The 12th appearance was to Stephen just prior to his martyrdom. And uh, then the 13th appearance was to Paul on the road to Damascus. The 14th appearance was Paul in Arabia. And the 15th appearance was to Paul in the temple. The 16th appearance was to Paul when he was in prison in Caesarea. And the Bible says the Lord stood by him. And then the final one that we will look at is Jesus when he is revealed in the Revelation. Revelation chapter 1 to John while exiled on the Isle of of Patmos. So we looked at his appearance to Mary Magdalene. Let's look at his appearance to the other women. And this account is given to us in Matthew chapter number 28. And we're going to read verses 1 through 10. Now after the Sabbath, as the first day of the week began to dawn, Mary Magdalene and the other Mary came to see the tomb. And behold, there was a great earthquake, for the angel of the Lord descended from heaven and came and rolled back the stone from the door and sat on it. And his, his countenance was like lightning and his clothing as white as snow. And the guards shook for fear and became like dead men. That reminds me of when they came to arrest Jesus. And they said they were looking for Jesus. And he said, I am. And all of a sudden they fell backward, you remember. Well, the guards shook for fear and became like dead men. And the angel answered and said to the women, the women, do not be afraid, for I know that you seek Jesus who was crucified. He is not here, for he is risen. Come and see the place where the Lord lay, and go quickly and tell his disciples that he is risen from the dead, 
And indeed, he's going before you into Galilee. There you will see him. Behold, I have told you. So they went out quickly from the tomb with fear and great joy and ran to bring his disciples word. And as they went to tell the disciples, behold, Jesus met them saying, rejoice. So they came and held him by the feet and worshiped him. And then Jesus said to them, do do not be afraid. Go and tell my brethren to go to Galilee and there they will see me. Now our Lord allows us in the Gospel of Matthew to witness, to see the emotions and the feelings and the attitudes of these women. And I'm going to give you four different emotions that we see in these first 10 verses in Matthew chapter 28. And the first emotion that we see is in the first couple of verses, and and that is we see sympathy. So they're coming to the tomb, and they're bearing spices. Mark 16, 1 says, Now when the Sabbath was passed, Mary Magdalene, Mary the mother of James, and Salome bought spices that they might come and anoint him. Now, Salome is the wife of Zebedee, who is the father. So she is then the mother of James and John, the sons of Zebedee. So you've got Mary Magdalene, you have Mary, the mother of James, and you have Salome, the mother of James and John. And they had bought spices that they might come and anoint him. So the purpose of them coming to the tomb is to anoint the dead body of the Lord Jesus Christ. Because remember, you have to put yourself into their shoes and and say, or sandals, maybe we should say, and recognize that they've just witnessed the, the gross execution of the Lord Jesus, who suffered. He was wounded for our transgressions, bruised for our iniquities beaten to within an inch of his life and the scourging alone. So they didn't come to witness the stone roll away. That was a surprise. They came to anoint the dead body of Jesus. And so they're coming out of sympathy. And that's the first emotion Matthew allows us to see. And then Matthew also opens a window for us in his gospel to let us see another emotion, and that is a fear. So when they come to the tomb, they find that the stone had been rolled back from the door. This angel sat upon it. His countenance was was like lightning, his clothing as white as snow. The guards that were there shook for fear and became like dead men. But the angel answered and said to the women, watch this, do not be afraid. So what emotion do you think they, they had at that moment? They were afraid. They were afraid. He says, I know you seek Jesus who was crucified. He is not here, for he is risen. As he said, come and see the place where the Lord lay and go quickly and tell his disciples. So we get to see into the life of these women that not only did they have an emotion of sympathy and sorrow, but they had an emotion of fear. Now they come there, and probably they're fearful for several reasons. First of all, they're they're in a graveyard, Jesus was buried in the tomb of Joseph of Arimathea. No doubt there were other tombs in the area. And remember, it's still dark. It's not quite yet dawn. And they see the the stone has been rolled back, so the Roman seal has been broken. So now they may be fearful of what Rome will do. The stone's been rolled back. Their seal has been broken. And... And so for these reasons, they're fearful. And then also this this angel, anytime an angel shows up, usually the first words they say are fear not because you obviously you would be afraid if an angel showed up one day. Uh, Hopefully the first words they would say to me would be, don't be afraid because I'm going to be afraid if I see an angel. And, and his countenance was like lightning. His countenance was like lightning, and his clothing as white as snow. So this is a magnificent, brilliant 
scene which would strike fear in anyone. And then we have another emotion that's given to us. So after the angel says to go and quickly tell his disciples that he's risen from the dead and that he'll meet them in Galilee, they went out quickly from the tomb with fear and great joy. So they've got this mixture of fear, even though the angel said, don't be afraid. There's still some fear there. And yet there's also some some joy there. In fact, it says great joy. They have fear and, and great joy that you know, it doesn't appear that the body has been stolen. It doesn't appear that that uh, they have anything to worry about, that that God's in charge, that this angel has said to them that Jesus has risen as he said. And, and so there's some hope coming back. There's some faith coming back. And, and so they had this emotion of joy, an attitude of joy. And joy is a wonderful thing. At his right hand, there's joy. There's pleasures forevermore. And God wants us to know joy. Jesus said, I've come that you might have life and have it more abundantly. He says, I want your, your joy to be full. Joy is a wonderful emotion. And then the fourth emotion we see in this text is Jesus meets them. Jesus appears to these women. This is his second amazing appearance after he's risen from the dead. And he says, rejoice. And the Bible says they came and held him by the feet and worshiped him. That's what we're going to do when we see Jesus. We're going to fall at his feet and we're going to worship. So you have sympathy. You have fear. You have, you have joy. And you have worship. And all of these things are part of who we are, humanly speaking. So if you're going through right now a wide range of emotions, one moment you're rejoicing and the, and the next moment you, you're feeling back discouraged again, just know it's, it's, it's somewhat normal because man wasn't made to be alone. God said it's not good for man to be alone. And maybe you are. And so it's okay what you're feeling. This is the good thing that you're doing is you're listening to your pastor. You're, you're taking in as much as you can from everything that, that God's offering to you. Hopefully you're in his word. Hopefully you're praying. Hopefully you're taking some walks, enjoying God's creation, getting outside the house a little bit. Maybe get up in the day and get a shower and get dressed and just act as if everything's normal, even though... Uh, there may be a very, very similar schedule as to what it was yesterday. So I just want to encourage you to keep on keeping on and be encouraged and be steadfast, unmovable, always abounding in the work of the Lord. This too shall pass. And, and, and as they say on Fox News, you're another day closer to this being behind us. And we thank God for, the, for that reality. Well, you know, Hollywood, every time it portrays the the death and the resurrection of Jesus Christ. It usually does a pretty good job on the death of Christ. They, the crucifixion seems real. They do, a, they do a magnificent job with making it seem so real uh, in, in, the, in the movie, you know, the hammers and the nails and all of that. But usually they will spiritualize the resurrection. Usually the resurrection is just the only thing they'll show is maybe some music and and uh, they'll look up to the skies maybe with the camera and you just had this sense of, of he rose, but no one really knows. And I can promise you, if that's the way it was, the disciples would have never believed. They would have never believed in the resurrection of Jesus Christ. They, they only believed in the resurrection of Jesus Christ because he personally appeared to them on various occasions. And Thomas, you remember, said, I won't believe unless I can put my finger into the prints of the nails in his hands. Then I, I, I will believe, and only then. So you're not talking about a bunch of gullible Galileans. You're talking about people who would not have believed if it had not been for real. 
So Christianity is the true religion. And we, we know that this is not just some mystical story, that the tomb is empty. The stone was rolled back. The angels did declare in Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John, he's not here, he's risen. You had this angelic declaration given. Uh, his, his grave clothes were left behind. If somebody was going to steal the body, they wouldn't unwrap the grave clothes. The napkin laid to the side, folded by itself. No, there was no stolen body. Jesus came up out of that tomb just like he said he would do. Destroy this temple, and in three days, I'll raise it up. Now, I want to give you uh, four imperatives that we see in verses 6 and 7 of our text here in Matthew 28. And the angel says, he is not here, for he is risen. Now, watch this. Come, see the place where the Lord lay. Go quickly and tell his disciples. Come, see, go, tell. These are four imperatives for you and me also. We need to come. God invites us to come, just as he was inviting these women. Come. Come to this place where the Lord lay so that you can witness that his, he's no longer there, that you serve a risen Savior. He's in the world today. I know that he is living whatever men may say. Come. And our Lord Jesus said in Matthew chapter 11, verses 28 and 29, he said, Come unto me, all ye who labor and are heavy laden, all you who are burdened down with the cares of this world, it's one catastrophe after another. If it's not a hurricane or a tornado in Nashville, then it's tornadoes down in Mississippi. If it's not COVID-19, it'll be something else because our days are few and full of trouble. And all that we're learning from COVID-19 is what we already knew, is that we're all going to die. It is appointed unto men once to die, and after that, the judgment. And so this world is full of trouble and woe, but we have hope in Jesus Christ. And as I said in the last study, you know, maybe, maybe the disciples, when Jesus died, they lost all faith. Maybe they lost all hope for a while, for a season, until they saw the risen Lord. And then their hope revived and their faith revived. They believed, they trusted, they had hope again, but their love for Jesus never died. And I hope that your love for Jesus will never, never die. He says, come. And then he says, see. And what should we see? Come to this empty tomb and see. See the condescension of your Lord Jesus Christ. Though he was God of very gods, though in the beginning he created the worlds, yet he became a little baby at Bethlehem and lived a sinless life, performed miracles, raised the dead, walked on water, turned water into wine, healed the sick, caused the blind to see, went to a cross for you and went to a cross for me and rose from the dead on the third day. Come and see the condescension of your Lord that in his humility he came not to be served, but to serve and to give his life a ransom for many. Come and see, and see the horror of your sin and the horror of my sin, that Jesus was wounded for our transgressions and bruised for our iniquities. Come and see, see something that will remind you that you too will one day die. Come and see the empty tomb, that Jesus is not there, that he is risen. Come and see that we too one day, this tomb teaches us, come and see that we too shall rise and that one day we will be like him. First John 3, 2, for we shall see him as he is. Come, see, and then go. 
Go, the third imperative. Go into all the world and preach the gospel. Go. Our Lord is saying to his church today, go. When we get through this crisis, it's time for the church to wake up. And it's time for us to go and then tell. Tell the good news, the greatest news ever heard. Our Lord said, and I'll close with these verses, verses 8 through 10. And our Lord shows up and appears to these women. He says, rejoice. He says, rejoice. Why? Because death is not the end. Death is not a cul-de-sac. Death is not a cul-de-sac. It's not the end of the road. Not for us as believers. I just want to read you several verses, and I didn't mark these in my Bible, so it'll take me a few minutes to find these verses, which is good because that'll give you time to look them up too. It's Psalm 47, 49, Psalm 49, and verse number 15. I'm going to read this for you. Psalm 49, 15. But God will redeem my soul from the power of the grave, for he shall receive me. God will redeem my soul from the power of the grave. Listen to this verse. Psalm 73, 24. Psalm 73 and verse number 24. You will guide me with your counsel and afterward receive me to glory. Hosea chapter 6 and verse number 2. Hosea chapter 6 and verse number 2. I'm giving you resurrection verses that death is not a cul-de-sac. It's not the end of the road. Hosea, the prophet Hosea said, after two days he will revive us and on the third day he will raise us up. Isaiah chapter 26 and verse number 19. Your dead body shall live. Together with my dead body they shall arise. Awake and sing, you who dwell in the dust, for your dew is like the dew of herbs, and the earth shall cast out the dead. All those who are in the graves are going to hear his voice and they're going to come forth. And the earth will cast out the dead. Death is not a cul-de-sac. Daniel chapter 12 and verse number 2 says that many of those who sleep in the dust of the earth shall awake. There's going to be a, a waking up morning. Some to everlasting life. Some to shame and everlasting contempt. There is a resurrection of the just and there is a resurrection of the unjust. There is a resurrection to eternal life and there is a resurrection to eternal death and destruction. One final verse, uh, Job chapter 19. You'll remember Job after all of his sufferings, yea, even in the midst of his sufferings, he says in the 19th chapter and verse number 25, For I know that my Redeemer lives, and he shall stand at last on the earth. And after my skin is destroyed, this I know, that in my flesh I shall see God, whom I shall see for myself, and my eyes shall behold, and not another. Job said, I know my Redeemer lives. And I know this, that he who raised up the Lord Jesus will raise up us also by Jesus and present us with you. My friend, be encouraged. Your Savior lives, and because he lives, you shall live also. The Lord richly bless you. Until tomorrow night's study, join us again at 6 o'clock. If you can't join us at 6 o'clock, any time after that, you'll be able to get the next Bible study. We'll be looking at the third appearance of Jesus, our risen Lord.